Hello, welcome back to the workshop. I recently bought a round column mill. This one is made by Jet. It's the JMD 15. I paid $1,000 for this one on Craigslist, including a vise, collets, and clamps. This one was too heavy for me to carry in from my truck by myself, so I took it apart and I brought it in in pieces. I used that opportunity to recondition it. So I took everything apart, cleaned it up, gave it a coat of paint, and I repacked the bearings. As part of the assembly, I want to convert this over to a VFD. Specifically, I want to install a VFD and a one horsepower three phase motor. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about installing a VFD on one of these machines. If that interests you, stay tuned. We'll get started. This is the VFD I've installed on my Atlas lathe. I want to replicate this setup on the mill. So basically, I've got the VFD, a tachometer, and an emergency stop switch, and that's mounted on a stock. So this stock is bolted to the table, separate from the machine. So here's how I'm going to make this. I'm going to start with some steel plate that I can bolt to the table. I'm going to add some square tubing to hold the VFD at the right height, and then I'm going to weld on a steel plate that will hold the VFD in the safety switch. I don't have the materials I need to really build this, so I'm going to cobble it together from scrap. I'm using some 3 16 inch steel plate that I had left over from the Dodges frame repair. I also had a couple scraps of 2 inch square tubing. I decided I could weld those together to make one piece. Alright, bingo! I've got the mill mounted on some half inch steel plate. I plan to mount the VFD in the corner of that plate. The head on this mill rotates, so you can unlock the column and spin it in 360 degrees. I'm thinking if I put this right here, I'm going to crash right into it if I try to do anything. So I want to have some usability, some swing to that head. So I'm thinking instead, I'm going to mount it over here. I also want the VFD positioned so that when I'm standing in front of the mill, I don't have to reach too far to get to it. I'm thinking that this might be a little far, so I'm going to slide it a bit further this way. Because I planned on mounting it to this plate, I drilled four holes, one in each corner, and I was going to bolt it down. But now that I moved it over to a separate plate, to its own plate, I'm thinking I might just weld this in place and have this steel plate be part of the assembly. So if you're adding a VFD to your mill, you'll likely need to replace the motor. On my mill, it had a 1 horsepower, 120 volt single phase motor. A VFD requires a 3 phase motor. The motor I'm using is made by Reliance Electric. It's near identical to the original motor. The only differences are, this one is quite a bit heavier. So this weighs about 60 pounds and this one's about 40. The original motor has a cooling fan, which this one does not have, and the output shaft on the original motor is 22 millimeters, and on the new motor it's 7 8 or about 22 and a quarter millimeters. So to use the pulley, I'm gonna have to bore that out. Seriously heavy. Holy crap. So according to the wiring diagram that came with the motor, for 230 I need to wire T1 to T7, T2 to T8, T3 to T9, and then I need to wire T4, T5, and T6 together. This is the VFD I've chosen. I went with this one because I thought it was the same as what I'd used on my other tools. Once I got it, I realized it wasn't. The model is YL600. This one's rated at 4 kVA, or I think it was 3 horsepower. One thing I do like about this one is it's got a big number pad. My other VFDs, I don't know why, they've got really small buttons, a really small dial. They can be hard to operate. I like that these are spaced far apart, they're easy to see, and they're easy to feel. I am using two safety switches on this machine. 
I want one up by the VFD where I can get to it easily with my hands, and I want one down on the table that I can hit with my knee. The VFD only has one input for a safety switch, so I'm going to wire these two in parallel so that if either one is pushed, it closes the circuit and turns off the VFD. So the pin on this VFD that we're going to use for the safety stop switch is X5. It's a programmable pin, meaning that we can enter a code, and depending on what that code is, this pin will do different things. So I'm going to connect one wire of the safety stop switch to X5 and the other to COM. The reason we installed the VFD was to get easily adjustable spindle speeds, but we need to know what those speeds are. So the next thing to do is install a tachometer. I want the tack to sit on the front of the machine, so I designed a new front plate in SolidWorks. I then 3D printed that on my MakerBot replicator and painted it gray to match the rest of the mill. I'm still using the step pulleys, so I wanted to keep the speed chart on the front of the machine. To use it, I trimmed it out with some snips, cleaned up the edges on my sander, and then I held it to the front cover with some double-sided tape. I'm using one of those cheap tachometers I got on Amazon. This one came with a tachometer, a wiring harness, a pickup sensor, and a magnet. So according to these instructions, red is DC positive, black is DC negative, and yellow is the signal wire. And then on the pickup sensor, Brown is positive, blue is negative, and black is the signal wire. So let's get that wired. The tachometer uses a Hall effect sensor and a magnet to measure speed. I drilled a divot and then cut a hole with a half inch end mill to give the magnet somewhere to sit, and then I epoxied it in place. I've mounted the pickup sensor for the tack inside the belt shroud. I've mounted it in such a way that when the shroud is installed, the pickup sensor sits down inside the casting. All right, so that's for the tack. The larger wire here, this is the power. That's going to route back to the power supply in the VFD. And the smaller wire is the pickup sensor. And I'm just going to coil this zip tight and push it up into the housing. I'm going to use a small 12 volt power supply to run the tachometer. This is a Meanwell RS25. I'm going to hold it to the back of the plate with some double sided heat sink tape. They didn't include any slots or any cutouts to run wires into the bottom. They did on the top, but not on the bottom. I don't know why. So I'm running the wires in through the ventilation holes and pushing them up through. So this is the lead for the power supply. I'm gonna wire it into the inlet side of the VFD. So now I wanna show you how to program this VFD. I think of all the things for these VFDs, programming is what people find most intimidating. This is the manual for my VFD. If you open this up, there's a lot of information in here that you pretty much wanna ignore. But what you're after is this table. So this table tells you everything you need to know. It's got four columns. The first column is the parameter number, or what on the VFD is P. So the first one I show you will be P0000. The second column is a description of what that parameter changes or what it is. The third is a range that that parameter can be set to. And the fourth is what it was set to when it left the factory. So as an example, the very first one, this is the one that tells the VFD what your power is. So it's P0000. It's listed as the main frequency. It can be set between 0 and 60 hertz, and it's set at 50 hertz from the factory. So the first thing we'll adjust is this P0000, and we'll change this to 60 to match US power. So to program this VFD, we select program, and we're going to get that P number I mentioned. So this is parameter 0000, and in the book it said this was the main frequency. So this is the main frequency of our power coming in. So in the US it's 60 hertz. So to set this, 
you've got your P code flashing and you hit set. And mine is set to 60 because I already changed it. If you just turn this BFD on right out of the box, this will be set at 50. To change that, you use the arrow buttons and you set this to what you need. So in the US, we have 60 hertz power, so that's what I set it to. And then to get it to take, you hit set. So one thing this manual provides that I have not seen with other manuals, other VFD manuals, is it provides a simple list of settings you need to adjust to get your machine up and running. So for us, we want to change all of these settings to match our US power. So I will put a list of these, a screen capture of this on the screen, so you can see what these are. One thing they don't mention in that simple startup table is the actual motor configuration. And on this VFD, that's in the 12 series parameter codes. So P1200, that's the motor rated current. This is set at 15. I pulled that off the nameplate of my motor. It was only 2.8. 1201, motor rated voltage. This is set to 220. My machine's got a 240 volt motor, so I adjusted that. The next one, 12.02, number of motor poles. This is the number of pole pairs, and it's calculated based on the frequency on the nameplate of the motor. So I changed it from two to four. And then this goes on. So after you configure your VFD for the simple settings to get running, come into number 12 or this 12 series parameters and adjust these to match the motor you use. I recommend putting this book somewhere where you can find it, somewhere close to the mill just because you never know when you might want to tweak a setting and there's so many in there you won't remember. I did look for this book online, I couldn't find it, so don't lose the printed copy. So let's take a quick look at my mill, I'll show you everything working. So I've got it powered on, the frequency is flashing zero because it's not running. I'm going to pick a frequency, I'm going to hit run, the mill will come on, And you'll see the spindle speed displayed on the tack. I am still using the stepped pulleys for my motor. So it's set up in whatever position to give me a max RPM of 874. I kept the step pulleys because I want to be able to adjust this. Give me different torques, different speeds, that sort of thing. Once I'm done milling or I want to shut it off, I just hit stop. And the mill will power down based on however I've configured it. I can adjust the speed and I can do it on the fly. So by turning the dial here, we can speed up or slow down the mill to whatever feed rate we want. I never could get the safety stop switches to work with this VFD. I tested it with a multimeter. It appears to be wired correctly, but I tried various combinations, different programs for each of the different programmable pins, and none of them worked. I suspect there's a software issue with this VFD, and it's not pulling those pins. So I pulled this off. I'm going to send it back. I can't use a machine without a safety stop switch. So instead, I replaced that with one of these AT1 VFDs. This is the same VFD I've got on my Atlas lathe, and I've got on my drill press. It's a really good VFD, it's easy to wire, it's easy to program. From a video perspective, it's wired and programmed exactly the same way as this other VFD. So let's take one more look at the mill. I want to show you everything working with the new VFD. And the safety stop switches do work now. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Aside from the defective VFD, everything else went really well. If you've got one of these mills and you're tired of changing speed by adjusting step pulleys, one of these VFDs is a really good way to go. I spent $300 on the VFD and on the motor, and then I think another couple hundred dollars on wiring and hardware and electrical boxes and that sort of thing. To me, $500 adds a lot of functionality and a lot of convenience to the mill. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video, or at least found it useful. 
If you did, consider liking the video and also subscribing. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.